I am going to give a small demonstration for those on the Open Prosthetic Project page um, about the APRL hook. Now, some questions have been asked about how the hook works and why is it so good at functioning for somebody like myself when it was really designed for people who may have less um, arm function than what I have. Um, the keys about this are, I think, two or threefold. One is <clears throat> it will lock in any position that you want to lock it in. So, for instance, um, it's fully open now. Um, if I want to close it and have it lock here on something, it certainly will do that. Um, a little bit more force will allow it to open again. Um, I can also make it open just a little bit smaller as well. Uh, the other nice thing is that when it's voluntary closing, you can apply as much force as you want to hold on to something. So, for instance, um, if I'm going to use a knife and a fork to eat with, then I typically use the fork and hold it first. And I can apply a lot of force to this to keep it locked. And this fork is v very tight in here. I don't have to worry about it sliding out on me. So I can use a knife, hold on to steak, and cut with it and, and really use it without me worrying about applying any extra force. Um, of course, once you tighten it down this much, you need to apply an equal amount of force to get it to release, to open up again. A fork is pretty important, but something like what I do, which is carpentry and using uh, nail sets a lot, and chisels and things where you, you have to apply as much force as you can to hold them, you know, something like this really requires a lot of force, and something that has, maybe you can see it, something that has um, built-in ridges or some kind of diamond pattern is very tight. This actually won't even come out. If the hook is in good shape, um, but this one's relatively new, um, it will hold very, very well. So I, so having it lock in place is almost essential. Now the most essential thing is when doing something close into your body because um, there's not enough length in my arm and shortness of this cable to work in really well so closing the hook is much more difficult in close so like if I'm doing something like tying a tie you know and I need to hold the tail of the tie I'll just that you do every day which I do every day <laughs> in carpentry you need this so I don't have to worry about the tie coming out because it's locked down I don't have to worry about extending or holding or, or rubber bands or anything I know that it's tight and I can pretty much just tie my tie every morning, like I always do, um, doing this very specific job, and you've got to be careful the ties get caught in saws sometimes, so I keep them tied up, so there's my tie, and then all you have to do is just release it and you're set. Um, <laughs> what else? Oh, tying my shoes. I can do that very easily. Um, it also helps to tighten down. Now, a lot of people have probably learned how to do this, but it took me probably about six months to really get good at it, but use always the right, the string that's on the right. So I just lock it down in here, tie it like that, use the fingers of the hook, swing around, and then let go of it and pull it tight. And it works really well to have this lock in place, otherwise I think that maybe rubber bands would be strong enough to hold it, but I think that there's no question about it being held if I tighten down as tight as I want and have it lock in position. Um, the other thing is I can make it a little bit wider, as I showed you a minute ago, to hold something like a bottle. And I don't have to worry about the bottle slipping out, especially if I'm trying to open it with an opener or something like that. Um, there's no chance of when I do a twisting force that with a rubber band on a voluntary opening, the rubber band is all you're relying on here. So if I were to do a twisting force with a rubber band, it would open. Um, so you can do twist-offs. I can do twist-offs without any problem. <laughs> um, these don't happen to be twist-offs, but for something like this, when you're doing a twisting motion, um, it makes it easier. So that kind of brings us to the whole problem with the cast version of the APRL. The twisting motion is what kills this device. So 
you know, having it locked in position and applying a force can make these parts break. Um, now, maybe technology is getting best, better on the casting, which I'm not sure that it really is, but um, the ones that I had been getting refurbished over and over and over again for three or four years definitely fail over time. Uh, this one happens to be actually brand new. Um, has a serial number in the 10,000 range, so if, if they numbered them from starting at one, then that's not actually very many of these ever made. But <clears throat> using this for working and those kind of things sometimes causes this to break. But to tell you the truth, holding a bottle or eating with it and those kind of things I, I find would be normal everyday use. And if this device is not really designed for those uses, then it's questionable what use it would be designed for. Um, but I find that it holds up relatively well if you don't either catch it on something, um, twist it, or bang it on something. So if I'm just using it for general purpose, work, and everyday activities, I find that it works very well. Um, but I think that as we spoke or as we talked, um, these things being milled either out of aluminum or titanium or something like that, I feel that this product could last indefinitely, uh, independent of the in internal parts which could be replaced at a, at a much, uh, much less cost than replacing the whole item. And then the fingers can be replaced. Um, the part that I was actually talking about before was <clears throat> the wrist threads uh, that I just put on the uh, the wiki page. Um, these parts here, I know that the guys at Hosmer are developing this product being milled out of aluminum, but they're still going to rivet these stainless steel threads on the bottom. I feel that it would be really great if we could make this out of titanium and include this threaded portion at the bottom, which would be one less stress point to break and I think that if this were milled and made as one piece there would probably never be a failure. Um, these rivets do go bad from time to time and I've had them the rivets themselves just break off you know using it for for long duration. Uh, the other problem is dust does get in here and water from time to time um, and they do recommend that I lube it but I've tried all kinds of different lubrication and that doesn't seem to make it last any longer necessarily. Um, so I think otherwise um, it's very similar to any other style hook except when you're using it you're stretching your arm out to close it and this is the part where I think is the most advantageous to an amputee because if you're carrying something heavy the hook won't tend to open up on you because if it's voluntary opening then pulling this cable will make the fingers open and I think that's kind of counterintuitive to working with this device. I want it to stay closed if I'm carrying a heavier item and my cable is being pulled tighter, not open, um, and trying to use a voluntary opening and voluntary closing hook at the same time. I mean over the same time period, I should say, not certainly at the same time, is very difficult because your mind is set to stretch out to close versus stretch out to open. And there's two, two totally separate functions. Um, so in general, I think that this hook is an asset to me, and I think it can be an asset to a lot of other people if they actually use one or, or try one out. I know it would be much more difficult for somebody who already uses voluntary opening, but I feel that the design of this and its uh, multiple facets, so to speak, the closing and staying closed, um, make all the difference. So, there you have it.